St. Louis Post-Dispatch columnist Tony Messenger, also a contributor here to the Big 550 KTRS every Tuesday and Thursday. Good morning, Tony Messenger. Good good morning, McGraw. How are you doing? We're doing great. Why are you picking on my friend Ed Martin? What did he ever do to you? Oh, I wouldn't <laughs> pick on poor little Ed. I think he's got the, you know, the rest of the world doing that all by himself. <laughs> you, you, you you did bring up um, hypocrisy is an interesting word because depending on whose ox is getting gored and who's in office and who's not in office. Um, but you brought up an interesting little sort of twist about Ed Martin, which was kind of interesting. Yeah, so, um, you know, for those who have been around a long time, they recognize that, that Ed Martin was uh, uh, summarily dismissed from the uh, administration of Governor Matt Blunt, where he was chief of staff during the email scandal in which, you know, it's interesting, we've been talking about Hillary Clinton's emails uh, over the last couple of years, but the fact is Missouri had its own email scandal a few years ago in 2007, 2008, when Ed Martin, as chief of staff, uh, refused a Sunshine Law request that I made uh, of him when I was uh, editorial page editor in Springfield, uh, asking for some emails regarding um, uh the selection of the next Supreme Court judge. Uh, And I was also looking into some advocacy that that he was doing uh, on behalf of uh, anti-abortion groups. And I already had the email that I was looking for, uh, and they said it didn't exist. And so I started writing a series of stories, and other journalists around the state started writing stories. And in the end, uh, the Post-Dispatch, the Kansas City Star, and the Associated Press filed a lawsuit and won the lawsuit and had 60,000 emails uh, delivered from the Blunt administration to the Post-Dispatch office. They're still there in storage. I looked them up the other day. Uh, And I looked them up because Ed Martin's name has appeared on a list of 31 people applying for the Supreme Court opening uh, created by the tragic death of uh, Richard Teitelman from um, uh, St. Louis, Judge Teitelman, who died uh, last year. And... The person who will have tremendous influence on who who that next judge is, and it's not going to be Ed Martin. He's just not qualified. There are a lot of tremendously qualified people on that list. But the irony that I wanted to point out is that the judge that he tried to attack in 2007 was Patricia Breckinridge, who was appointed by his boss, Governor Blunt, to the Supreme Court and is still there and is now the chief justice. And by virtue of being the chief justice, will sit on the commission that will choose the panel of three finalists that they will then give to Governor Eric Greitens, and Governor Eric Greitens will decide who the next Supreme Court justice is based on those people. So, uh, as I said, karma comes closed in a long black uh, robe of justice. And uh, that's it, it was an important bit of history, I think, to, uh, to mention, considering that, you know, we have short memories these days in uh, when it comes to politics, how quickly things happen and change in our world. So one of the things you brought up in that article, and which a lot of people should know, is the way Missouri picks judges, which has uh, been praised on both sides of the aisle as the model way to pick justices and judges um, in a nonpartisan way for both sides. And it seems like both sides always want to sort of change it and amend it to their point of view. But the Missouri plan is w- a well-respected way of picking judges. Yeah, and here's the important thing. I was on a, I was on a, uh, a, a nationwide commission at, at a uh, place called the Kettering Foundation in Dayton, Ohio, a couple of years ago, and, and sat with judges and journalists and lawyers from all over the country and there are a variety of ways that judges are picked in this country, some very interesting ways. It's not just election or the Missouri plan, but the Missouri plan is very well respected. And, and one of the reasons is not because it completely keeps politics out of choosing judges. You just can't do that. Politics is going to be involved one way or another, but in which it balances out over time the political influence and makes sure that qualified people – ultimately get chosen as judges, even if politics gets into the process. I got an email after my column the other day from a former Supreme Court justice who, who uh, used the line that I believe Churchill used about democracy, talking about the Missouri plan, and said, it's the worst plan out there except for all of the others. Uh, in other words, yes, it's flawed, but it's better than, than, than all of the others. And here's how the Missouri plan works for Supreme Court judges 
appeals court judges and circuit court judges here in uh, St. Louis and in Kansas City and in Springfield. The, the, a panel of experts, judges, lawyers, and citizens appointed by the governor and, and on terms in which governors have time, they're staggered terms, so, so one governor can't overly influence uh, the panels. Although if a governor serves two terms, they can have tremendous influence on the panel. That group picks from applicants. Those applicants are made public. Then that group, the, the uh, uh, Appellate Judicial Commission, has public meetings in which the candidates are interviewed, and then it rates those the top candidates. Those ratings are made public, and it gives the top three to the governor who then ultimately chooses from, from three qualified candidates. It's a much better process than direct election in which, as we can all see what happens in elections in Missouri, where we have, in many cases, unlimited money coming in and much a significant amount of partisan politics enters into judicial races when, uh, when there are direct elections as compared to a process like this that rewards merit. So part of the reason for the column was to say, hey, look, the, the Missouri plan is being under attack again. One of Governor Greitens' major donors has been trying to get rid of the Missouri plan for years, in part because judges have ruled against him in lawsuits. And, and he's now convinced, after a $2 million donation to Eric Greitens, that maybe Eric Greitens might attack the Missouri plan as well. Uh, my point of the column was that doesn't need to happen. Mm. He's going to get an opportunity to choose uh, his own uh, judges. Qualified judges. Yeah. Tony, uh, Post Dispatch columnist, stltoday.com, also with us Tuesdays and Thursdays. Have a good week, Tony. Thanks, Mark. 828, Big 550, KT.